and we are live and yes i did just get one of these this is a at games dongle hdmi console now got a nice little protective cover over this console itself this has 20 built-in atari blast atari games and it's called a blast console and it even came with a nice little sticker it comes with a controller which is similar to all the other at games it takes two AAA batteries. Thankfully, I have chargeable batteries, so we can try this console out without any issue. And what can I say? This is the first of one of two consoles. It comes with this little charger thing to power the console. So we're going to figure it out. If not, I can get the cord from my other AT Games console to pl plug right into it and test it out without issues. It comes with this. It comes in this pretty simple packaging. It comes with a little. It comes with a little advertisement thing for you to buy more blast consoles. And it shows how you start playing and using the console. All that simple jazz. The instructions are pretty simple. But this is the console itself. Got your HDMI port. You've got your little micro USB port, which if you look at it, it's like this, and just says blast on it. This is, and then it says AT Games on the back. This is the console itself. It comes in packaging like this, which I don't know why you would put it in such cheap packaging, but okay. And then it comes with this box and the list of about 20 games that are built into this console, including Centipede, Millipede, its sequel, and a few others. But we're, I'm going to go ahead and get this thing fired up, or at least start it anyway. So what we're going to do is take it over to the game station tv yes that's right the same tv that you guys see me playing crappy games on from other at games consoles and ps4 we're gonna find a good spot on this tv to play this thing because for obvious reasons i'm out of space i have plenty of space on there but we're gonna plug this into the hdmi Looks like the USB can just mate right into the TV and reach off the power. So that's actually a smart idea. We can use the TV's own power from the TV to power this weird console. My parents are going to freak out, probably because I own so many fucking consoles. I don't give a crap. First, I'm going to unplug this from the TV, though. Thankfully, it fits, so... <laughs> Plug this little USB into its own console. So I guess it goes in like this. <laughs> the console itself. This is a small micro USB. But there we go. I guess it plugs in there. Hopefully this works because that'd be weird to just plug the USB into this. Plug the USB into your TV. Any TV would probably work. Any TV has a USB slot. And then a HDMI slot. I'm saving the other space in the back. My HDMI 2 for the freaking fire stick whenever I figure out how to get that stupid thing to work. Next, we pop open the batteries. Compartments, two AAA batteries. Thankfully, though, we have handheld consoles that contain green rechargeable lovely batteries. Which I've hidden somewhere in my backpack, so if you guys don't see me, me rummaging through my backpack here and hold my handheld consoles. I'm gonna put these two an energizer and a freaking radio shack battery that just escaped somehow. Get over here. And we're gonna plug this into the console itself. Now I hope this console works and it's not a humongous flop. I've heard a lot of other reviewers complain about the way the console itself operates. Now so now we got the power on. Uh, thankfully, there's an on and off button on these things, so accidentally pretty much ruin the console. And then that little thing goes in the back. Next, we turn it on. We have a nice little blue light that shows that this console is working. Let's turn the TV on. Find out if this thing will play. Now we're gonna focus the TV a bit. I'll figure out, I may have to put this on something a little bit higher. Usually I don't worry mu too much about these things, but uh, uh, but the way I got this uh, 
little uh, thing set up on the back. And I just tossed the box and shit. With the other console I bought, this box inside this big ass thing here. And I'll keep the instructions. Next, we're going to have to go in there and huh, do some fun, fun, fun TV switching. So it'll take me a few minutes to get this thing all to work out. Source. HDMI 4. <coughs> and there we go. That sound is the console. I may take this off here and use something else to act as a... Uh, oh, damn it. Sorry. Looks like I may have covered the camera. Sorry. Okay, there it is. There's the games. Console. Yeah, there's something simple about the Atari games. Fatal Run. Desert Falcon. Bowling. Air Sea Battle. These are all Atari games. So. No copyright is attended here. Okay, there we go. Save Mary. There's the Atari Sword Quest, Sword Quest Fireworld, Warworld, Tempest, Yars Revenge, and Yars Return. So, sorry, game up. Let's see how this looks. There we go. Okay. It's always loading. Turn the sound down a bit on the TV. Loud. Gets a little used to the controller compared to the other controllers for the other consoles. Oh, so that's how you got it. Okay. Getting used to the controls on these controllers is going to take a few bit. But this is basically Yara's Revenge. Okay. Basically, it's a plain, a plain reverse version of um, of asteroids. Oh, cool. Oh, okay. So we press the menu button. You can go press A to menu to go back. A to save. B to load and C to quit. So you hit the C button. So this is a rather simple and it uses a rather simple <coughs> UI or interface many of these games are older Atari so you're looking at the uh, start button doesn't do squat I think the menu button works is this a suicide button okay so I guess you can I have no idea. Hmm. <laughs> Just not. Some of the games may not cooperate. Radar lock. Let's try this. A is to select now instead of pressing the start button like on the Legacy flashback. Legacy B is the pause. There's something so simple about Atari games. This game works, especially these games look pretty great. So you press the menu and you can just press the C button to quit. And so you press A button to fire, B button to do whatever. Sometimes these games, X, Y, and Z don't really 
tell you what they're supposed to do. And then you've got, this is the D-pad. It's pretty functional. As you can see, you got your movements. You got a rewind button to rewind the games if they uh, mess up. And then you've got the A, B, and C buttons to that. Then there's the off switch for the console itself. So when you're done playing the game, you just turn the controller off. And pretty much just um, exit from whatever game you're playing if you can go to the source. So say you're done playing that, you can go to PC or whatever on the TV. We're just going to go on, turn this on. Let's see here. This one, I think this one's plugged into HDMI 3, so let's take a look at HDMI 3. There we go, HDMI 3. The control, how about as intuitive as on this game. The, the size though, this is more like a Sega Genesis. This is like a, like what they did for the Sega Genesis consoles that they built. Thankfully though, the battery compartment works great. The console works. That's a good thing. It's bad when you buy a console. That costs about $18. Yeah, I only spent $18 for that console. Now, there are other games in the series. One of them, which is called The Blast Legends, is similar to this. There's a few games on it. But that will end this video, and I will see you guys in the next one.